that this is what, as a resident, you should be knowing, and it's easy remembering those definitions. I'll try making it simpler to make you understand clinically also. So whenever we talk of vision, or we talk of visual equity, equity is just one part of vision. You have the contrast and the glare and the visual field. Visual equity is measured on the charts with the black and white charts, contrast being full. But what we miss out is the contrast and the glare. And of course, the visual field. So if I just give you an example, and when you go out to buy a television or something, the same quantity goes bad. Now, that, let me explain it easy. You have the definitions. It says it's the minimum angular spacing between the vision or the visual, e uh, visual equity or the object can be identified as two separate objects. Otherwise, it will be a single one. So the principle based on this is in, in the Snellens, we have seen that it has to, each alphabet which is created on the Snellens chart has to create a five minutes of arc at the nodal point. And these are usually six meter distance charts. And the alphabet box is created as each wing ha limb has five boxes, each one creating a one minute arc. And in totality, the alphabet, it's five minute of arc. Now, the alphabet sizes, as we see in the Snellens charts, have a height and width. And sometimes it's important to know this. So the six by 60 height is 8.726. We're talking about it in six meter charts. And the six by six is 0.872. So this height of the alphabet is calculated so that it forms a five minute of arc um, angle at the nodal point, and this five minute of arc will give us the minimum resolution, and hence the patient will be able to see this. So notations, we all know, six means in uh, Snellens, the, the distance at which you are doing the test, and the alphabet which he could read properly. And of course, we put in those parts as plus and minus also, if it is a number of alphabets read. Uh, the smallest unit of Snellen letter is one-fifth the size of the whole letter. That's because it's five components. And the equity can be measured in terms of minimum angle of resolution. And we'll go ahead to understand the log mars and mars and how they can be converted into it. So mars, mar units are actually conversions in minutes of arc. And logmar is the logarithm of this mar based on which the logmar or the ETDRS or the Bailey Lovi charts are constructed. And I'll be going further in detail ahead. Okay, so we discussed this, and the same point goes if we are talking in terms of mar vision. It is one minute of arc which is subtended at the nodal point. And log of one would become zero. Now, these are terms, I know it becomes a little difficult making it understand in just covering the whole subject, but log mar, mar, minimum angle of resolution, visual equity, few terms which you need to know, and the principle of Snellens. Snellen, mar, log mar, decimal, all are convertible, and there are 10 units, log mar will become 1.0, and decimal, certain European countries use decimal, which is just the, um, the conversion of that uh, Snellen's uh, fraction in the decimal form. The target resolution, as we have understood that we need, is expressed as the smaller angular size at which the subjects can discriminate the separation between the critical elements of the stimulus pattern, such as dots, grating, or checkerboard by the eye and then only it will be readable or legible the image formed the perception at the retina level and hence the 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 minimum angle is not there and hence the VP eye is not able to perceive the other term that is usually uh, to be you know more learnt is the vernier vernier acuity and the vernier acuity says the minimum perceivable misalignment uh, which is probably one of the finest skills of the human eye. And it is like there are two 
vertical limits and how far are they separated what the eye can pursue uh, perceive it's the is called the vernier equity and it's supposed to be 24 second of arcs okay so we go back to the grating chart and the same principle applies to the sinusoidal gratings where we have these gratings of different thickness and they can be converted into square wave gratings and you know the finer the gratings and the closer they are they'll define the resolution of the vision so the snellens itself is like a grating which is converted and it uh, each wing will uh, again 1 minute of arc or the total because it's box it is 2 minutes of arc it can be converted into the uh, sinusoidal gratings so the factors we have refractive error will make a diff of course we all know exposure of the target the area of the retina stimulated adaptation and the movements so important fact factors in this is one is peripheral vision now the central vision is supposed to be the best and as we going keep going away from that the peripheral vision is very poor threshold so at a distance of 5 minutes there is enough loss of visual equity and it is even in 10 minutes of arc periphery you are getting to 25% of visual equity now i mention this because we are talking about central field loss patients if we are talking of any macular pathology and you are measuring the visual equity you see if the center gets damaged and he is using a peripheral vision the thresholds significantly drop as these charts say so the best vision in is there right in the center and it goes like a curve where the periphery is going to be significantly low vision if the center is damaged let's talk about other factors and the important factor to talk about is contrast and this should be assessed all the charts which we have are more than 84% at least up to 95% of contrast which we calculate there is a formula here white over black luminance white minus luminance black divided by luminance white plus luminance black the charts which are used commonly are the pelly robson the fact chart which is the functional equity contrast test chart is mostly for the research um, institutions but what you have in a pelly robson it's you have 3 3 units and it has great contrast dropping down so the patient like a visual equity chart is reading this pelly robson chart and as you can see some of you may not be able to read the last lower ones and where one stops as a block is the contrast equity now uh when i do an eye examination which i learn globally of course contrast equity is always measured along with snellens and if you are doing a routine assessment you can actually pick up many diseases before even the eye examination is done if you have a eye with the contrast being poor so either something is wrong in the eye or there is a refractive error or something which is not corrected in fact certain glaucomas early have also can be picked up by just a drop in the contrast why should the eye have a drop in the contrast if it is normal and healthy it shouldn't so just measuring a contrast equity itself can give you lot of clues in your clinical practice and the contrasts the beautiful charts available this particular one is a lia chart which can be used even for kids it's for distance and you keep showing these symbols and you know the contrast keeps dropping down by percent very interestingly when i do this assessment and we find the difference in the contrast between the two eyes even after the best corrected vision we know either we have not done a good refraction or something has gone wrong inside the eye so measurement of contrast should be part of a routine examination then we talk about luminance and <clears throat> obviously it varies so the eye actually says has a photopic range of 40 to 600 and high luminance is 200 low is this uh, up to 50 to 75 and each test should be performed at the high luminance when we do it 
So let's just say the charts have these desirable. I'll quickly run out. Now, visual equity testing, whenever done, unaided. Please do not miss this. Even if the patient has a habitual prescription, you know, what he regularly uses is habitual. That is aided. Monocular, binocular. Do not miss binocular because if binocular drops, it's a bit less than it. It again signifies a lot of pathology behind. Distance, of course, we prefer to have six meters. It's because it's supposed to be an approximate to the infinity, but uh, the assumption, even if when we go to six meter, is the chart which should be helped. So I'll skip some, the chart, luminance, and others. The condition of charts. Pinhole visual equity. When we record important thing, the size of the pinhole ideally is 0.75 to 1 millimeter, but should not be greater than 1.5 millimeter. Okay, and if it improves, we know it's recording. Uh, uh, the um, when it improves, we know it's refractive error. Logmar charts quickly running through it. ETDRS based on it. Five alphabets. Each alphabet has the same spacing. Each line has the same spacing. Each line has five, and each alphabet is 0 0.02. And it starts with 1.0, 0 0.9, and you know, point logarithm values till we have zero, which is six by 1.0 is six by 60. I would love to run this quickly as in small example. He reads and add 0 0.02 for every missed one multiplied by 3 because he missed 3 here. So you add 0 0.9, the line num uh, value, plus 0 0.02 into 3, 0 0.96. That is the value of the logmar chart. There's another way to do. From the line above, you put in the missed ones, uh, the red ones, but it's easy learning the line which is there. The missed ones are picked up. Now logmar charts, 4 meter, the beauty is you can take the same chart to 2 meter, the same chart to 1 meter. And that's how we do in, in the um, low vision assessments. So let's say the same example, 0.96 was there. Instead of 4 meter, you brought it at 2 meter. All you have to do is just add 0.3 in that value, and that becomes the actual logma visual equity. And so from 2, if you bring it to another 1 meter, you add another 0.3 value to it. So how beautiful that chart can be just brought Continue to use the same chart for the patient. Near visual equity, we know we have the, uh, we all need to know what is the visual equity threshold norms in particular age groups. So if it's a one year old child, you're expecting six by 18 to be the normal visual equity and not six by six, right? So these are charts which are available. The information is future, especially many of the notations we use in research methodology also. So we don't use the, uh, normally across the globe, there is some standardization of even the notation of visual acuity also. So please take your time, go through it, go back and try to read all this. And uh, this is a very important talk. I think uh, it has been aptly started with a very excellent talk by none other than Monica Chaudhary. I think I learned my refraction partly from Monica also. We were together in RPA Center Ames. I think Dr. Santosh would know. Uh, she was the person who would actually refract uh, P.V. Narsim Rao, Mother Teresa, who were the VIPs who came to RP Center. And it was her reproduction that we were writing it on the prescription. Thank you so <laughs> Start right away. Yeah, it's ready, sir, for you. Uh, so thank you, Monica, ma'am, for the amazing session. And uh, now we have with us uh, Dr. R. Krishna Prasad, sir who is a renowned ophthalmologist, uh, or I should say, I should correct myself, he's a renowned and he's a director of the PG Teaching and Fellowship Training Program as well at M.M. Joshi I Institute, Hubli Karna. More than a reason. There are two reasons why you should learn refraction. Okay. Number one, practical. Apparently, they know more refraction than you. Uh, and whatever mistakes, especially the elementary mistake that you make in your practical exams, so you need to pass the, you're not fellows or you're not your Because most patients think that doing, giving glasses and doing refraction is very simple. And doing cataract surgery is reverse. So most of you can do very good cataract surgery, refraction. And 
वो बोलता है उसको मे बी सस्पेक्ट इवन विद सो दिस इज बिकॉज यू शुड नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट दी रिफ्रैक्टिव पॉवर ऑफ द आई डिपेंड्स ऑन फोर थिंग वन इज द कैरेटोमीटर एज यू लॉन्ग नो एक्सियल लेंथ एंड द पावर ऑफ द आई वोल दैट वी पुट इन साइड द आई at the same time the distance between the cornea and the intraocular lens after surgery which we call as post operative ac depth okay you can never know the post operative depth either before the surgery right it's only a guess so this we assume in most thing but sometimes the lens sits back sometimes front so our earlier like srk please dump it never use srk formula anymore it's a jolt stone age where it assumes post operative ac depth or what we call as the effect effective lens position finally where the lens sits so to guess the effective lens position we have a plethora of different i hole formula why there are so many formula each coming every day new one because they are trying to guess the so use nowadays barrett universal not srk formula because you can guess the effective lens position more effectively okay uh, this would be monica's favorite if somebody is wearing a minus 10 glasses okay you want to give contact lens what will be the power of contact lens just a guess minus 10 minus 10 smaller myopia it is the same but for for example for minus 10 glasses the contact lens would be around minus 9 correct so around minus 9 would be the contact lens there is actually a chart so what we call as the vertex distance you know see similarly plus number when it goes backwards it becomes less powerful that's why a afeki glasses what is the power of afeq glasses normally plus 10 on the eye if you give a contact lens to an afeq person what would be the power around plus 13 or plus 14 and if it inside the eye it becomes around plus 20 or 22 or 23 whatever you normally know okay so the vertex distance makes a difference so vertex distance has many connotations number one i told you choosing the lens power if you are putting in the sulcus most of the lens power on the eye will cover is for in the back if you put in the sulcus you need to make an amendment you need to reduce the power okay so you should know that at the same time if you have whatever is the distance from the eye to your trial frame note that it should not be abnormal because if he wears a spectacle finally and if the vertex distance is different for higher pass it will actually have a different effective i mean effective refraction so make sure that the distance vertex distance is normally taken into consideration as i told you for contact lens you need to understand this okay so should we check near vision all age groups adolescents children all age groups i think this cannot be over emphasized please make it a point to whatever it is just check near vision because don't assume accommodation and please understand accommodation as one more m in it okay so in the exam don't write a single m it's an accommodation with a double m so accommodation there are people myops who do not use their accommodation regularly so in those patients accommodation is little not it is little you know weak or not being used so sometimes if you give a full correction especially a very high myop child the near vision may be really less so the child may not use it so check the near vision as a guide to decide the final power so slowly and steadily you can increase the myopic correction because don't assume accom there are a lot of kids who have accommodative lag okay uh, sub optimal accommodation so don't take this for granted and of course now you have let's say a patient comes for cataract surgery and she has undergone lasik 20 years ago she won't tell you you are not asked you are not told you may you think you do a biometry and do a cataract surgery what will happen to her refraction post operative any guess can you tell what will happen it will be a normal should be a metro what is all this hype and noise about and never use the word lasik i just put it just for you to understand lasik is a procedure please use the word lvc laser vision correction which will include even smile okay so use the word lvc as a standard thing from now on just for you to understand what will happen refraction patient may went into hyperopia yes usually it is hyperopia if it is not accounted for it because of the problems the two problems number one there is a, a an estimation of keratometry will be abnormal because a lot of assumptions that happen in keratometry and also elp 
okay even the elp in the oil formula will be actually going for a toss if the keratometer is so it is so just very quickly i'll just say post refractive surgery this i'm not just going to very quickly because we still have a lot of other business so if clinical data is available if you know all the details okay the biometry please do a biometry and give it to the patient for all patient undergoing lvc it will come to use later do the rival master and give we give the chart to them if it is available what so there are basically three methods remember only the fees manis other so you can probably understand so just remember this okay you can just understand this if you know the pre voice ivoil power before lasik okay so that plus what is the change in the refraction divided by 0.7 you just add it to that for example if the previous ivoil power is 15 and he had a 7 dapt myopia so it will be 25 the present ivoil power so if you have the previous data you can use his manis if it is not available there are, there are two methods i will just tell you the modified melonis okay it's nothing but on the zeiss topographer try to take the cursor to the center check the central corneal power that you multiply by 1.1 and subtract 6.1 diopters that will be the central corneal power if the data is not available okay just remember these two names okay all hyperopia should be ideally corrected yes or no yes or no yes it tells something here yes or no so you should know hyperopia can be helped by accommodation so lot of kids lot of people can use their accommodation accommodation is for near the actual usage is for near but they use it for distance remember this it's a misuse but even then we can correct a great bit of uh, hyperopia with accommodation and still manage where people cannot manage this and as the age advances when the amplitude of accommodation comes down then you get into trouble so understand this basic thing before we continue and this is the last one prism by comes at 40 yes or no always so this is my favorite no why can you explain this i think they think i gone crazy elbow joint elbow joint se kya vasta hai so just understand i did not have my elbow joints I had a one long bone like this humerus and dalna was single bone so i'll be keeping my you know laptops i mean or my mobile phones or books like this so my prismoy would be coming at 55 or 60 okay just because you flex at your elbow you hold it at 30 40 cm it's coming at 40 if you had a short arms like this if you're holding it close to your face it would have come at 25 so just an assumption the amount of accommodation that we have to see clearly at around 35 40 cm mm cm would be around that age because from your childhood the amplitude of accommodation keeps on decreasing and around 40 we start facing problems okay so never go with an idea that a 35 year old cannot have pris biopia and not all people above 40 should be wearing pris biopic correction you understand this so how do you prescribe so basically i'll just quickly tell you because this is something very important you have a cataract boom you have a refractive surgery boom going on for you the next will be the pris biopia boom we are already actually reaping the benefits our generation your generation pris biopia is an optical problem can be corrected by surgery so refractive surgery would be the way to go not necessarily cornea based the lens based refractive surgery would be the answer to pris biopia and since you're all young you don't understand what a pris biopic feels <laughs> monica is young so she will not understand but i will understand and monica taught me in rp center pris biopia is a wretched thing after the cell phones you have a message and you can't read it okay so people will pay any amount to get there to see clearly without glasses okay so i have various weird indications to do refractive lens exchange nowadays and it is all very very genuine reasons so till then you have to give glasses so when you give glasses so like normally you say by age plus 1 for 40 1.5 or 445 us no 
I told you it's not at 40, so no such thing. Whatever is the thing, I'll just give you a simple idea. Whatever is your correction, there's a possibility that, like for example, I'm plus bio. If you give me plus one, I will read N6. Let's say you give plus two, then also I read N6. Which is the correct one? So if you are given plus one, there's a possibility that you have undercorrected it. So what you do is, you just bring the reading material around three inches in front from your working disk. Then also you should be able to see clearly. If I've used all my accommodation in the eye and plus one is just barely enough to see N6, I will not be able to see that clearly. That means you have undercorrect. Then you need to add plus. And if I overcorrected, plus two is a overcorrection, I'm really relaxing my accommodation to see clearly at 35 centimeters. If you take it away, I can't further relax my accommodation, it becomes blurred. So if you take it away, if it becomes blurred, you have overcorrected it. So see that your correction gives you a range of clear vision in front and behind your working distance. That is the right way to go. Patient will accept this correction. Simple thing. But theoretically speaking, in the exams, you will have to know this. You are using the near point of accommodation. Near point of accommodation is the point closest to the eye at which you can see clearly with maximum accommodation. You just, you have got those so many rulers, RAF rule and things like that. Let's say if I 25 centimeters, 50 centimeters. And I'm right now needing 1.5 to see clearly at N6, the least. So 50 centimeters is my NPA, 100 by 50, two diopters of accommodation I have. One fourth of two diopters is 0.5 diopter. So you add 0.5 to 1.5, which is your least correction, and give plus two, not 1.5 so that you have that extra 0.5 for you to relax your accommodation. I'll give a small analogy. The near vision that you check in your clinic is not the right thing to do. Because it's very brightly lit and you give a very nice high contrast print, he will read N6 to impress you. He will put all his accommodation at work and read N6. It's like a weightlifting champion lifting 150 kgs once and winning the gold medal. But you can't expect that weightlifter to lift 150 kgs throughout the day. It's a one-time effort because you just put everything at once, read N6, he can't read N6 throughout the day. Okay, but he can probably lift 75 kgs or 100 kgs maybe. So that means you need to keep some extra accommodation unused for reserve. You get that point? So just don't, because they read N6, don't think that they don't have a near vision problem. That's why I said you need to check this. Okay, so let's get started. So now this is your hardcore passing thing. And exam you all, because they will give you this. So you see the cross, and they will give you this, the examiner, and they will ask you, Give me the acceptance. Uh, sir, uh, plus three. Uh, uh, acceptance. See, it's like a proposal, no? The examiner has to accept you, your proposal. So I know you are tongue-tied for a proposal in front of a girl, but there are many options in with them, but examiner only once you take the exam. So plus, so jaldi bol nahi. So plus three diopters, uh, spherical. With the so this is the retinoscopy that you got. So in the examination, when they present this cross, ask two questions, very politely. Politely. How will you ask? You just a working distance? <laughs> examiner to. Sir, please tell. <laughs> sir, sir, no, madam, you to? Aajkal to madam zyada hai. Dekho, yaha pe baut bada madam zyada hai. Okay? Can I know the working distance? Only working distance? Cycloplegia, yes. So the working distance is two third meters and it's a dry refraction. Now can you do it? Anybody has done it? It takes around three seconds to do this. Mentally. Huh? 
1.5 mine. Point five plus point five uh, and after here uh, okay when you put sphere it is working in all directions so subtract the working distance and the cycloplegia in this case it is not there from one meridian put it as a sphere the difference between the two meridia, put it as the cylinder in the appropriate axis. So, like that, karte. So, 1.5 you need to subtract from plus 2. So, plus 0.5 diopter sphere. Be very clear. Don't allow the examiner to prompt you. Plus 0 0.5 diopter sphere. And difference between 2 and 3 is 1. So, is it plus 1 um, cylinder or minus 1 sphere? How do you know? Difference to 1 minus 2 was it? Yeah, right. So, remember the number line in your classes, arithmetic. So, aapko plus 2 se, plus, plus 2 se aapne choose kiya, plus 3 par jana hai. On the number line, 0, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, minus 1, minus 2. So, on which direction you are moving? This is a positive, this is a negative side. So, from plus 2 to plus 3, you have to go, you have to move one diopter towards the positive side. If you have minus 3 per jana hai from plus 2, then you have to move 5 diopters towards the negative side. Then it becomes minus 5. You have to plus 1. So plus 1 diopter sphere, sorry, plus 1 diopter cylinder at 90 degrees. Because you know it's horizontally, you have to put it 90 degrees way. Okay? It doesn't end here. You need to tell what kind of, if it has astigmatism. Normally they will give a spiro cylinder. Okay? So what kind of astigmatism is this? What kind of stigmatism is this? Against the rule stigmatism. Hyperopic, compound hyperopic. So both are plus. So it is compound hyperopic astigmatism. And please remember, minus cylinder at 180, plus cylinder at 90 is with the rule. Remember this. You can back calculate all others. Remember with the rule, it is minus cylinder 180 plus cylinder 90. Okay? Yaha pe plus cylinder 90 hai. So, ya kya hoga? With the rule hoga na? Ah. So, you should never go against the rule, boss. Hmm? Chalo, now this one. Anyone? Anyone to volunteer? Don't write. Now, what is that? You're all good at maths, I know. What's the sphere? You didn't ask me the question, madam. That is how you ask me? So I would like to know the working distance and if the cyclopedia was used for this patient. You almost took five minutes for that. Okay. So working distance is one meter dry refraction. Now? I'll subtract minus one from um, plus two. Uh, plus one. Plus one sphere, plus one diopter sphere. Cylinder, Cylinder will be um, minus five. Number? Uh. Minus five uh, cylinder at 90. Oh, great. So, she just hit it on the head. So, plus one sphere, minus five cylinder. What kind of astigmatism is this? Minus cylinder at 180 is with the rule. This is against the rule. And is it? Compound or simple or mixed? Mixed astigmatism. Okay? So it's an against the rule, mixed astigmatism. Okay? So can anybody tell what is the answer A, B, C, D? Okay, let's solve this. Cycloplegia atropine ke liye one dap to subtract karte hai. Okay? So 66 centimeters is 1.5. So 1.5. 2.5 you need to subtract. So subtract 2.5 from this, it will be minus 0.25. So C and D hoga. So C and D So from plus 2.25 to minus 1.75, you need to move around 4 diopters towards the negative side. So minus 4. So answer is C, right? 
Okay. So now this quickly. Anybody can volunteer? <coughs> yeah, you just. Minus one point. Minus five uh, spherical at a uh, uh, Yes, sir. Uh, minus one uh, diopter uh, spherical uh, and uh, plus. Uh, you are subtracting totally two. So subtracting two from minus two becomes minus four. So from minus two to minus three, you go towards the negative side one. So the answer is. Okay, what kind of a cylinder? Compound myopic and against the rule, right? So, what is the answer, A, B, C, D? Quickly, quickly. Why? B is also answer. See, the cylinder should be always more than the sphere for a mixed astigmatism. The cylinder should be always more than the sphere for the mixed astigmatism because if you transpose the other, it will be a different one. Okay. Now this is an oblique astigmatism. So I'll just sol solve it for you. So we subtract 1.5 from 2.5. It becomes plus one diopter sphere. And I need to, it is actually 5.25 minus 5.25 is the cylinder. You agree towards the number line. And it has to be put along this direction. If 135 is the axis, the corresponding perpendicular axis is 45. So the answer will be plus one sphere minus 5.25 at 45 degrees. Okay. Can anybody transpose this quickly? So to transpose, you need to do an algebraic sum of the sphere and the cylinder, which becomes minus 4.25 sphere. Change the sign of the cylinder. So make it plus 5.25. Make the perpendicular axis, okay? So 135. So trans can you transpose this? Minus 1.5 sphere plus 3.5 cylinder at 37. Great. So this plus 2.5 sphere. Minus 3.75 cylinder at 153. So how do you guess it? So basically if it's a three digit number, I keep telling, add the first two, you get the perpendicular axis. Like this, if it is 147, it is 57. One plus seven, 88. So if it's a single digit, a double digit number, split the first number into one and the remaining number. So five becomes one and four, 29 becomes 119. So you guess the perpendicular axis. Just read it out. 33. One zero one. If it is anywhere from 91 to 99, take the 9 out. If it is 1 to 9, add 9 to it. Okay, remember these two things. I think, okay, so this is one exam, if anybody's exam going in this year, we have one of three weeks, we are having this program exclusively. Uh, it is not to teach you ophthalmology, it is to make you pass the exam. It's an intensive four day course, where it's a pure practical way, we just tell you how to outsmart the examiner, how to fool the examiner and pass. Okay, so uh, I'll just, uh, can I go to the next uh, talk? Rolika? Ah, so we'll just, uh, Anybody up there? So next I'll just quickly go through the uh, subjective part of the refraction. Okay, so this is a quick talk on uh, subjective refraction. See, you can do a retinoscopy, get your acceptance, but the patient will not, may not accept it. 
you can't give this whatever acceptance you told no on to the as a prescription because the patient that's that is what is patient is supposed to accept but many a times it won't happen because of your inaccuracies in your refraction maybe because of the miscalculation of your distance and there are so many other physiological parameters okay you have to basically put those uh, trial you know uh, lenses in the trial frame and the patient has to finally accept and see and get his best corrected visual acuity so there is no prescri prescribing the objective refraction except in special situations like in children where you give objectively or in people who cannot you know uh, cooperate for the test for most people subjective correction is the way and it has to be done so this is the final thing presently the game has become more complicated i think monica will agree with me so it is costlier than cataract surgery nowadays spectacles so you can't write any prescription hand it over the patient he will spend a lakh on it and come back and say i'm not seeing well because you gave some wrong prescription he will collect 1 lakh from you and also charge you I mean sue for the mental trauma so be correct now the things are more there's a lot of stakes okay so let us get started so this is a simple thing i always tell this even though it basically to urge people to use this it's a very simple thing you can make it out of your paint program it's available they are just radiating lines like the spokes of a wheel or a clock covers so just remember this so this is for to look for a uncorrected cylinder okay or to refine a cylinder basically this is for refining the cylinder and so what you do is all subjective correction you need to fog the patient so what is fogging it is to add either a plus or a 1.5 diopter sphere so that the patient will not accommodate and change the results at the same time for refinement if the vision is six six parts they can't actually tell the difference in subjective what happens we give them two choices a is better or b is better vision is six six parts and there is a small change he can't discern between the two so you need to reduce the vision to maybe 612 618 so that the vision is blurred and any difference or any change or refinement improvement can be easily picked up so it is to reduce the vision also by a predetermined level you know how much you have added okay so that's why all fogging be it jackson's cross cylinder be it binocular balance be it this you will have to fog the patient okay so kya chal raha hai fog chal raha hai so this is you just fog the patient ask him to look at those radiating lines or tell him to find which is the darker or clearer lines in the axis okay and you need to probably put a if whichever is looking all should be equally blurred or equally clear if there is no cylinder okay but if one of the lines are looking better or clearer or darker that means there is a negative cylinder along that axis for example so this is the thing so don't make him see this put a fog so once you put plus 1 1.5 let's say he will see this that means you need to put a negative cylinder along 180 degrees it's a simple thing takes 15 seconds go and do it in your clinics okay do it in your opds in okay try to do all the refraction what i'm talking today it can be practiced so once you have that practical experience your voice your you become more confident in your voice okay they have the suit the examiners can know that you have done it okay don't try to tell anything for the first time in the exam unless you have tried it on yourself and you can prove it is not like you are not giving a peripheral bar block okay you can always try it on your students on your colleagues okay a lot of people are there with refractive error so binocular balance is something a very important one not done see it's like i'll explain why binocular balance is important let's say a child with very robust accommodation let's say he has minus 2 in both eyes you are refractive what we do when we check the vision we close the other eye right so i occlude the left eye right eye he see minus 2 he accept 66 6. okay i occlude the right eye now start looking now for some reason he accommodates he accommodates two adapters he is not looking there he is looking at you your face maybe maybe it's more interesting he accommodates minus 4 then you put minus 4 he sees it's clear because with that accommodation only he looks at the screen and accepts minus 4 so you write minus 2 right eye minus 4 left eye now if he starts wearing this glass if he is not 
accommodating, he sees clearly with right eye. When he's accommodating two adapters, he sees clearly with left eye, never with both eyes together. You get the point? He cannot wear this glass comfortably. So that means whenever you're checking vision right and left separately, remember a patient who can accommodate can create problems. You have not accounted this. So can you check vision of both eyes simultaneously? How can you do I open two eyes, open right eye, one chart, left eye, one chart, and I have to do it. You can do it using a prism. So put a vertical prism, you will have two charts, standard charts, one above, one below. Depending upon where is the prism, one chart is for right eye, one is for left eye. So you can probably assess vision both eyes together. Just try this. Try this. So you need to use a vertical prism and use a fog. Okay? So just do this, this is a prism, vertical prism. So you just have to, how do you do this? Let's say you have checked the vision, this boy only, minus two, minus four guy. You put a plus one, plus one fog. So vision drops to 680. You put a vertical prism. So he sees two charts. If he has been corrected properly, he should see both 618 only or both equally clear or equally blurred. But now, when both eyes are open, he's not accommodating or accommodating both eyes. Accommodation cannot happen in one eye only. It is a, it happens binocularly. So one vision is more blurred than the other when we put a vertical prism. So simple, after every refraction that concludes, put plus one, plus one, put a vertical prism. There are two charts, are both same? They say both are same, fine. Simple, okay, try this. No rocket science in this. So duochrome test is for a small level. This is to refine the sphere. Okay, this is to refine the sphere. You may be overcorrecting or undercorrecting using the chromatic aberration. We use this, and if the vision is less than six to nine, you cannot use this. It is for six six parts people. Okay, 